book was a lot. <laughs> this book went a thousand miles an hour after the beginning until the ending. Battle, 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 ground. <laughs> and just when I felt like I was getting desensitized to it, like, oh, you know, another battle, I guess now they're doing giants or whatever, right? Like, just when I was on that cusp of not really caring about the battles anymore because it felt like our main characters could never get hurt, then... <sighs> Can we talk about that? Can we talk about that? <laughs> I love Murphy so much. From the very beginning, I have shipped Murphy and Harry together. Even in the first few books, when Murphy is admittedly a little annoying and super confrontational, I still adored her! And I have waited for the 15 books of them slowly, slowly coming closer and closer to a relationship until finally in book 16 we finally have it and then she dies in book 17. <laughs> And when Murphy first died, I just was in shock. Like, no, she can't really be dead. She, she, she's coming back, right? Right? And, and then I just wanted Rudolph to die so much. So I felt the exact same emotions that Harry did. Rudolph should have died many a book ago. I'm so done with him. But I think that's what we're supposed to feel at this point, so it's fine. But Murphy's death was done really well because in this book series where there's magic and time travel and alternate dimensions and illusions and all the things, it could be really easy for the death not to feel real. But Battleground really did Murphy's death justice, that they have closed the lid on that coffin pretty firmly. I mean, she could still come back via time travel or alternate dimensions, etc, etc, but like, it feels way more final than it could have felt. Because having her be an Einherjar and can't come back until all mortal memory of her is gone, like, that's a really nice touch because you know that she'll have a fighting life one day. She'll get to rise again in her Murphyus glory. But it won't be in Harry's lifetime. She won't be the love interest anymore. So it's really nice closure for the readers and for Harry so he can move on to his new love interest. Can we talk about that? We're gonna talk about that. Put a pin in it real quick. So there was this contest to make a bingo card for Peace Talks and also kind of for Battleground. And literally on my bingo card, I put Harry Murphy Soul Gaze because I've been looking forward to this and I know it hasn't happened yet in the series and I was like, why haven't they had a soul gaze yet? I want to see this so bad and I wanted to see it so bad because I knew that Murphy would see the darkness inside of Harry and still accept him and it would be a good moment for Harry's self-esteem and not being a monster. And that's kind of what this book is about, even down to the soul gazes, that there's something so messed up inside Harry that it frightens off a kraken and also Bradley. And it just makes Murphy's death so much more terrible that they never got the soul gaze before she died and they were almost there and then no! Anyway, I'm kind of sad about that, but I'm not sad about the soul gaze through line because I think that was really well done because a lot of this book is about Harry finding how to balance his pain and his monsterish tendencies. I love the scene where Mab is jealous because Harry got burned by the lightsaber because he got burned by a lightsaber and it still hurts and it's pain to remind him not to be a monster like he was in that moment. Oh, it's so good. But um, uh, this book got really dark in some places. Which brings us to the counterbalance of comic relief and the anvil. When I was reading Peace Talks, I was like, what's this chondritis thing? It's kind of out of place. I wonder if it's ever gonna like really be part of the main plot. And then I was like, oh, it'll probably be a big thing in Battleground or something. And then it turns out in Battleground, it's just a punchline. It's a punchline to a joke that was set up in book five. And at first I was like, oh, that's kind of lame because it doesn't fit tonally with the rest of this dark book. And then I realized it's exactly what Battleground needed. Battleground needs some more comic relief. And yeah, it doesn't really feel like it fits, but that's because the rest of the book is so dark. And it kind of needed this comic relief because even if Battleground isn't a very funny book, The Dresden Files is a funny series. The Dresden Files is a goofy series. And if Harry Dresden wants to use his wizard flu to drop an anvil on a vampire because he made the joke years and years ago, that's the kind of book series we're at and I'm down for it. Like, this is the type of series where Harry will have to battle demons while covered in soap and naked. This is the kind of book series where Harry literally drives, like, a clown car and then a hearse with a flame job. I mean, Harry has an army that he pays in pizza. This is the kind of series where Harry gets engaged to his frenemy, the Vampire Queen. We'll definitely talk about that. 
like, sometimes goofiness is just goofiness, and I think it makes the story better. And probably this conjuritis will actually um, lead to Harry getting some power-ups, like realizing he can conjure things on purpose without having the wizard flu or shape-shifting or any of the other abilities that it's building up to. Like, I'm sure it'll become more plot-relevant in future books. Hopefully. But, like, I think the best example of this book being so dark, but then having a little bit of comic relief is this terrible, wonderful scene where Queen Mab has, like, a spear through her neck and Harry is like, Butters, we gotta get this out of her neck. And Butters is like, again? Harry, there's no point. And I laughed when I read that line because it's it's funny, but it's also making fun of Harry's desperation when he was trying to save Murphy, even though she had already kind of given up the ghost. But it's still funny. <laughs> even though it's making fun of Harry's pain and it's making fun of my pain, like, it was a good joke. Like, even in the midst of this sad, sad book, there are little rays of sunshine. Like, the anvil. Like, Butter's joke. Like, River Shoulders wanting his glasses. Like, Harry getting in an arranged marriage to Lara Wraith. Oh my, we have to talk about this. So I never really shipped Lara and Harry for the first part of the series, but then in Peace Talks, they had like some nice banter and I was kind of feeling it. But then I was also like, but he's with Murphy and Murphy is the OTP. So that's not gonna happen. But now that Murphy's gone and I feel like I have some closure, I'm really down for Harry and Lara. Like that's gonna cause so much drama and so much angst, however it goes. If they continue their frenemy relationship while being married, angst. They have to get out of the marriage, drama. They get into the marriage and then find that they're actually a really good match for each other and develop true love feelings, even more drama. Like, I'm so down for however this plotline pans out because it's just gonna be a wild ride the entire time. And I think it really shows a shift in the series that Lara has been like moving more and more towards friend instead of enemy. And this book had a lot of shifts and pivots in it that it really feels like a new turning point for the series because the series like started out wizard detective solving case by case, sometimes gets into politics, etc. And then in changes, it totally pivoted to wizard who is struggling to deal with all the bad decisions he's made in life and rebuild his life. And now it feels like Battleground, we're having another shift where it's Harry his world is getting crazier and crazier, and Harry is ready to be proactive and get crazier with it. And whether that means making his own school for gifted youngsters in his own castle, or new love interest, I'm so down for it. Like, I'm ready for this series to morph into something even bigger and better. But the shifting motion also kind of felt like it was a little too jarring in a bit of this book because it, this book is also setting up future plots and mysteries about starboardness, which I do think is good for the overall series to start these plots and slowly give you little clues. But also in Battleground, it just felt out of the blue when people started talking about starborn stuff and then people wouldn't answer his questions. And I'm like, is this really what we're talking about right now? Anyway, we'll see how that goes. I've heard people talk about this book comparing it to Avengers Endgame, and I think that's a really good comparison for the huge battle, battle, battle kind of feel to it. And also the everyone's coming together feel to it. But also, like, there's another connection here, which is the cinematic universe setting up future side stories through little scenes with other characters. So I feel like this book did that too. And I didn't really like those scenes that much, but I understand why they got to be there. Okay, other little tidbits. I'm upset that Marcone is a boss wizard now. Because Marcone's charm was that he was able to go toe to toe with the supernatural big hitters, even though he didn't have any supernatural power of his own. Just through his awesome wit and ingenuity and preparation, and it was like Marcone was the Batman of the series. It was so awesome. And now that he has superpowers, it's like, oh, never mind, I guess he's just one of the other superpowers. And then also he's better at it than Harry. Makes me upset. Harry worked really hard for those powers. Marcone just made a deal with the devil. Another question. Does Lara know that Justine was a double agent for Nemesis? Because she might know, and she might be working for Nemesis too, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, overall, I really liked Battleground. Definitely didn't like it as much as some previous Dresden Files books, but I did really like it for what it is. 
What it is, is a big slugfest with a lot of angst about being a monster, and it delivered. And there were some fun comic relief moments in there too.